So as I was preparing today's sermon and, and doing the readings, this one phrase from the letter of Romans, the last verse that we read, uh, verse 15, just stood out to me. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. For me, it just created this impression or this sense of joy, of you know, expectation. We, we've all waited for news, have we not? Eh? I mean, for different things. Sometimes it's, we're waiting to hear uh, test results. Um, we have somebody who's writing exams soon, and then we'll wait uh, with anticipation, waiting. And then when you hear that good news, there's this joy, this relief. Eh? Or you've been to the doctor and you're worried what might be, and you get the phone call and everything's okay, and you're filled with, with relief and with, 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 with a sense of joy. There's this anticipation. And just reflecting on that, I realize that we all bear and bring news, don't we? Eh? When I come and I stand here and I come and share a message, we're hoping I'm bringing good news. Eh? That's what I'm supposed to do, is bring good news. Sometimes the good news is a little bit difficult to swallow, uh, like medicine. But, but, but we, we, we come, we, we all got news to bring. When we, when we engage with people, when we have see friends, there's something we share. And, and so the question I was asking myself is, is what news do we bring? What news do we bring? Paul, writing this letter to the Romans, is very clear about the news that he's bringing. He writes it to a people he hasn't visited yet, the church in Rome, in anticipation of going to see them. And so this letter prepares the way, and in that letter, Paul sets out his theology. You'll find that Romans is probably one of the most theological dense books within the Bible. Um, sometimes when you read it, it becomes a little bit difficult to, to, to you know, follow exactly where Paul's going and what he's doing. Because there's just so much information in it. And we don't have to feel alone. Even Peter says that Paul is sometimes hard to understand. Eh? Um, but... but you know, as Paul speaks and he's preparing and he's sharing this good news to the people in, in Rome that he wants to come and visit. And he, and he tells them about the most important thing, which is that salvation is through faith alone. Not by works, but through faith alone. This critical, the central theme of, of Paul's message. This good news that he proclaims. And I've said it before that, that Romans is also one of those pivotal letters in our own theology as, 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 as Methodists because it was listening to a Bible study um, on Romans. In fact, uh, somebody was reading Martin Luther's introduction to Romans and John Wesley realized that faith is what saves him. You know, nothing else. Wesley tried hard to please God to do the right thing and then realized that it is through faith that he is saved. And he says that he felt his heart strangely warmed and that he trusted in Christ, Christ alone for salvation. And an assurance was given him that he had taken away my sins, even mine, and saved me from the law of sin and death. And so Paul's letter to the Romans is filled with good news. And that good news has not just influenced the church in Rome, but many for generations afterwards, people like John Wesley. And for us, as we've wrestled with our faith and come to a deeper understanding of what it means to trust God. And so there are those who have gone before us who have proclaimed good news. Starting with Jesus and people like Paul. And continued throughout the generations by people like John Wesley. All who have followed in Christ's footsteps to proclaim good news. Okay. 
for me, there have been people in my life who have proclaimed good news to me. I'm standing here because somebody proclaimed good news to me. There have been many. I, I think in particular when I was 10 years old, um, I actually still got the Bible uh, that I got in, should I say the date, 1983. Uh, I got this Bible when I was in Standard 3. Um, I think I must have been about 10 or 11. And I got this Bible. It was my first full Bible. Still got it. Looks awful, but I've got it. Um, I remember the Sunday school teacher who gave it to me. You know? I remember one or two other Sunday school. I remember in confirmation as a 16-year-old, the person who had a one-on-one -on -one discussion with me and, and, and just made me open myself to know that God is real, that Christ loves me. Those are people who proclaim good news into my life. And I'm sure that you have people like that in your life, eh? I know somebody shared, and I won't embarrass them about how somebody told them, I still remember when you taught me confirmation, you taught me this and that. Okay? I'm sure we can all remember. We're sitting here because somebody spoke good news into your life. And I'm sure you like, like, like me, you can rejoice in them and, and affirm that how beautiful are the feet of them who proclaim good news, eh? And so I realize that we all, with our lives, proclaim something. We proclaim some news. There are those, as I've said, who have gone before us, who proclaim good news. But they've also, if I reflect on my life, those who proclaim bad news to me. Huh? Uh, say things to me that have been hurtful. Things that have upset me. Those who have betrayed me in life. Those who have let me down. I don't know about you, but sometimes there are people who just suck the life out of you. Have you found that? Right? You, you engage with somebody. Some people you walk away from and you feel uplifted and, and strengthened. Others you walk away from and you feel emotionally tired and drained. You see them coming from a mile away and you try and go in an opposite direction. Right? You cross the road because maybe, maybe they're going to talk to you and just... They leave you so tired. And it's not necessarily, you know, you can't pinpoint what it is. But just people come and they just unload on you all their negativity and all the bad news and all the terrible things that are happening in the world and to them. And you leave feeling exhausted and depressed. But I don't want to be one of those people. And I'm sure you don't want to be one of those people. But the reality is, is that we all proclaim some sort of news. Maybe not with our words, huh? but by our actions, by the way we move, by the way we talk, by the way we treat other people, by our life outlook. We can't all be happy and jolly all the time. It's not what I'm saying. But what is our fundamental core belief about life? You know, that is the crux of the matter. You see, because what I say and the way I live, especially as a Christian, says something about the way I see God. If I say, you know, life is hard, life is tough, life is unfair... Um, you know, it's only always these bad people who get away with all the stuff and we who try hard, we're neglected and set aside and all of that. I'm saying that God is unjust, that God isn't involved, right? But when I say, yes, bad things happen, but God is faithful, God works with me, God works through the stuff. I'm saying that God, something about God, right? When, when I see and I punish people for doing wrong, and I'm not gracious, I'm saying something about how I see God. Because then I'm saying that God doesn't show grace, that God is puni a God who punishes. What I do, what I say, the way I engage with life, 
says something about my core, who I am as a human being. I'm not saying we must be inauthentic. I've been to people who are in awful conditions and go, God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. And sometimes we use it as a platitude. eh? It's not helpful. Yes, God is good. But it doesn't mean we can't acknowledge that I'm struggling. eh? But despite the fact that I'm struggling, God is still good. God is still faithful. It's a very different message. I acknowledge the reality, but I know in that reality God is. And so, who I am as a human being, who I am as a person, proclaims news. I proclaim news. When I walk in, before I've said anything to you, I've proclaimed something, have I not? If I come in here and I'm smiling and I'm happy, I'm saying something. If I walk in here and I'm sad and I'm miserable, I'm saying something. You know? We're not all gifted to be preachers. Some of us are called to preach from a pulpit. Some of us are called to preach in the mission field. Some of us are called to teach in small groups. Some of us are called to exhort others in one-on-one situations. Some are called to share good news through a meal, through sandwiches and soup. That's a proclamation about the kingdom of God. That says something about God. That brings good news to those who are on the street, those children who got fed Those who brought the food brought good news. And I'm sure those kids will say, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. All of our lives proclaim something. And I don't know about you, but I want to be the one that proclaims good news. That speaks life into situations. And it's not just in the important or or the holy places of church and and maybe outreach projects. It's what do you do at work? You know, do your colleagues see you and go in the opposite direction? What is it at school or in places where you study? Or more importantly, at home? You know, I remember like, I mean, I don't know about you, but... Okay, I grew up with my grandparents. So, so, so my grandmother used to say, wait until Opa comes on. Eh? If there was discipline to be dished out. Eh? That would be enough. Eh? So, oh, because you know that, that, that if your mom gives you a smack, you can get away with it. Eh? You know? But when your dad gives you a smack, it's a bit of a different story. Eh? But, but they also say something about that in that. Eh? Is that dad's a bit of an authoritarian. You know? Maybe dad's a bit unjust. I don't know. But, but I don't want to be the father that my kids are scared of when I come home. I want people to be happy that I come home from work. I want my kids to run out to meet me. And I want my wife to be grateful that I'm home and not go, oh, yeah, he's home. There goes the peace and quiet. Eh? <laughs> you hear me? Eh? It's those family dynamics. Eh? I'm sure we've all got family members that when we hear they're coming to visit, we go, oh. Eh? Rather be the family member that goes, oh, we're so glad that this person's coming to visit. By all that we do, and in all situations, we proclaim some sort of news. And ultimately, what we proclaim, the way we live, the way we are, must point something to the author of good news. It doesn't help that I stand in a pulpit on a Sunday and I preach wonderful about Christ and God's love for us and, 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 and everything that God has in store for us. 
and I walk out here and I treat my family badly. Eh? Or I treat the person at the shop badly. Then I'm not bringing good news. But I can stand here and preach a so-so sermon. But the way I engage with people can say a lot more than these words that I can try and utter. You see, as we go through life, we need to be able to share our faith with people. And like I said, it's not just in preaching, it's how we live. Because this world, we must agree, this world is in need of salvation. We, we hear the news, we see what's happening, something is wrong, something is broken. And the problem is that Christians aren't helping, are we? Some of us are saying things that are not helpful, others are fighting. We've got church leaders going to court to sort out succession issues. We've got this minister caught in that situation and another person with their Till, what, their fingers in the till. All of these things, we're not helping. We're not proclaiming good news. And the world needs to hear these words of Paul that says that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim Him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring you good news. And so I want to say to you, each and every one of us are sent to proclaim good news. In all your situations, at home, at work, at study places, schools, the shops, the environment, wherever you are, you are sent to proclaim good news. We are all sent. That is what Jesus said. He said, go into all the world and make disciples. We are sent in different ways. Eh? Some to preach, some to teach, some to exhort, whatever. But we are all sent. And I don't want us to sit back and say, yes, I'd love to proclaim good news one day when my life is better. One day when things are sorted out. We've read the Old Testament story of Joseph. Eh? In the worst of situations, in slavery, Joseph proclaimed good news. By being diligent, by being faithful to God. Peter, for all his bravado, eh? in the midst of a terrifying storm, says something about his faith in Jesus. Yes, he started sinking, but good heavens, he was prepared to get out the boat. Eh? So I don't know what's happening in your life. Maybe there are storms brewing. Maybe you've been betrayed by family members. Maybe you feel you're in slavery somewhere. Maybe life is hard for you. I want to say despite that, you're still sent to proclaim good news in that place. You're, pre you're sent to proclaim good news. And so the choice is yours, the choice is mine. And my challenge and my plea is that we will all respond, myself including, and proclaim the good news of God's transforming love. Not in word, but in the way we live and in the way we show God's love to those around us. Let us pray. Lord, through the storms of life, you are with your people in the person of Jesus, your Son. We pray, Lord, that you will calm our fears and strengthen our faith, the faith that we may never doubt your presence among us, but that we may proclaim that Jesus is your Son, risen from the dead and living forever. We long to hear your faithful word of righteousness and peace. 
Bless us with bold belief, even in the darkness of the night and the assault of life storms, that we may be messengers of your justice and of your love. And in the name of the one whom wind and wave obey, we pray this. Amen. Amen.